Hello. Today we're going to talk about Young's double slit experiment. We'll start by recalling the principle of superposition and then talk about how interference patterns are formed. And then finally, we'll get into the specifics of the double slit experiment. The principle of superposition says that when two waves overlap, they create a new resultant wave. At every point along this new resultant wave, the displacement of a point is equal to the sum of the displacements of the two original waves. For example, if we get constructive interference, that's because the two waves were overlapped in phase. Whereas if the two waves were overlapped out of phase, we would have got destructive interference. Imagine for a second, we have two point sources of waves A and B, where the waves spread out in all directions. At certain points, for example at the Golden Cross, the waves are going to be meeting in phase, and therefore they're going to be interfering constructively at those points. However, at other points, for example at the Purple Cross, the waves are going to be meeting pi radians out of phase, and therefore we're going to be getting destructive interference at those points. There are going to be many of these points where we get constructive interference, as shown by the gold lines in the diagram. Similarly, there are going to be many points where we get destructive interference, as shown by the purple lines in the diagram. Let's consider an example. You have two speakers producing the same sound wave set a certain distance apart. You then walk along a line from point A to point B. What do you imagine you would observe as you walk between point A and point B? What would happen is the volume would go between increasing and decreasing as you move between A and B. That's because at some points you would get constructive interference where the waves meet in phase, and at these points the volume would be louder, whereas at other points you would get destructive interference where the waves meet out of phase and the volume would be quieter. Young's double slit experiment was very similar to this, except instead of using sound waves, Young used light. Light was passed through two slits, which then acted as two independent sources of light. As the light passed through these slits, it diffracted out and was projected onto a screen. On the screen, it was observed that the light formed a series of patterns of light and dark fringes. Here's an example of the interference pattern from a double slit. The bright spots occur because of constructive interference, whereas the dark spots occur because of destructive interference. Constructive interference occurs at these points because the light is meeting in phase. The reason the light meets in phase at these points is because the path length difference between the sources of light is equal to n lambda. That is, the light travels further when it exits one of the slits compared to the other. If this difference in the path length travelled by the light between the slits is equal to some integer number multiplied by the wavelength of the light, the light would meet in phase. Conversely, we get destructive interference at other points because the light is meeting out of phase. The light meets out of phase when the path length difference between the slits is equal to n lambda on 2. In order to observe the interference pattern in a double slit experiment, it's very important that the light should be coherent. The meaning of this is that the light should have the same wavelength or frequency, and that the phase difference between the waves from the two sources should not change over time. Finally today, we're going to introduce the equation for calculating the separation between the bright and dark spots in a double slit experiment. In the double slit experiment, w is equal to lambda d over s, where w is the distance between the maxima in the interference pattern, s is the distance between the slits or the source spacing, and d is the distance from the slits to the screen onto which the interference pattern has been projected. Let's go through an example. In the diagram, there are two loudspeakers producing sound, which are separated by 8.5 metres. They're emitting sound of a wavelength 0.77 metres. When a sound engineer walks along the line AB, 65 metres from the speakers, he observes a regular rise and fall in the intensity of the sound. And here's the question. Calculate the distance moved along A and B between two consecutive maxima of sound. If you're feeling confident, you can pause the video and have a go at this question yourself. Answering this question is in fact very simple. All we need to do is calculate the quantity w. In order to do this, we just need to put our numbers into the equation, where the wavelength lambda is 0.77 metres, d is 65 metres, and s is equal to 8.5 metres. Putting these into the equation, 
we get that w is equal to 5.9 meters. That is that 5.9 meters is the distance between two consecutive maxima of sound. If you didn't quite get that last question on your own, here's an opportunity for you to have a go at some more questions. Pause the video and have a go at these questions. I'll give you the answers shortly. And finally, here are the answers.